what is remote viewing and can anyone learn how to remote view? Yeah, what is remote viewing? Remote viewing is all the all the paranormal things, including remote viewing, are done through your intuitive channel. Your consciousness has two different ways of processing information. One of them is intellectual, and the tool there is called logic. Then you have the intuitive side, and the intuitive side has nothing to do with logic. It's not logic-based at all. It's intuitive. You just know. Now, remote viewing is getting, collecting data out of this database. And I mentioned before why the database got constructed, where it is. It's in consciousness. It's part of this larger consciousness system. It's required to run the virtual reality. You can get into that database. You know, I told you the database was everything that possibly could happen and the probability that it would. Well, as time goes by, then the, data, the future probable database becomes an historical database. Everything that could have happened and the probability that it would have. And there's a little thread running through that big history database is what actually did happen. That's just a thread, a thread running through everything that could have happened and the probability that it would have. Now, that database is there for us to look at. And the database is very up to date because... The, you know, in this virtual reality, the the uh, the update time is very very small. It gets updated uh, uh, very quickly, so you can go to that database and with your intent, you can query the database just like you query Google. You know, you can query the database. So you go with an intent to know what is going on or what exists at a particular location on the planet. And you go, ah, I see it. It's the Elkville Tower. Oh, it's the pyramids. Oh, I just see a, a lot of crisscross lines and this and that. Well, you're looking at a chain link fence because that's what was where the, where the target was. So you are using your intent to collect data out of the database. The remote viewers started out believing that there was just, they were just able to see other places then they realized that that was kind of within range. And then they realized they could see other places anywhere, anywhere on the planet. Then they realized that they could see places uh, outside the planet. They could see what was going on in Alpha Centauri. And then they realized they could look at the backside of the moon. And then they realized that they could actually look in the past. And then they realized they could look into the future. So the whole concept of remote viewing uh, evolved over probably 50 years to something that was very much, I can see something in, you know, 10 blocks away or in my brother's house or something like that, to I can see anything anywhere, to I can see in the past, in the future, in any place in the universe. It's just collecting information. And that's all it is. This is an information system. It's a, it's a, a, a virtual reality. There's a database that explains all the possibilities, both present, you know, future, and in the past. So that data is there. You can go get past lives. Same database, just a different purpose. Remote viewing is is your intuitive channel collecting data. And again, some people are better at it than others because you have to learn to get rid of the noise. All the same stuff you have to learn to heal. You get rid of the noise. You have to have an attitude that's that's not self-centered, et cetera, et cetera. Can, can you remote view into the future? Sure. You can remote view into the future, but it's the probable future. There's, there is no fixed future. It's just the probable future. Now, some things are very probable. And if this future is something that's on your path to growing up, it may be manipulated, it may be nudged by that larger consciousness system. Because like I said, the system evolves as you evolve. You're part of the system's process for its own evolution. So the system is motivated to help you evolve. So if you are a person of interest, that means somebody who's trying to grow up and, and uh, you know, are interested in your spiritual growth and your intuitive side, then it will help you. And if there's something that you really need an experience that will give you an opportunity. It just gives you opportunities. It doesn't change you. It just gives you opportunities. You have to use your free will to grow. But if there's some opportunity you need, it will nudge reality around to be where that opportunity comes to you. You get 
you will get that opportunity. It's nudged into place. And it may have been predicted 20 years earlier. And it's not that reality or that the future was was fixed and it had to happen. It's just that the future can sometimes be nudged. And I've experienced that many times. I knew things, I was told things that happened 20 years later, 30 years later. And uh, some things that haven't happened yet, but they will. So it makes it look like there's a fixed future. Do you think that that's what a lot of people perhaps are quite psychic? Maybe every person is psychic, I would suggest. Uh, and they experience certain premonitions or a gut feeling or an intuition or something of the sort. And I feel like we're taught in this Cartesian, Newtonian world that kind of poo-poos on like the, the metaphysical kind of softer physics of consciousness space um, to not believe that that part is that, do you think that that's correct? Sure. Sure. That is, that is correct. That's exactly what happens. Everyone can do this. You're a piece of consciousness. These databases in consciousness are available to you through your consciousness. Okay. Now you only can do paranormal things through that intuitive side. The logical side gets in the way unless you're well balanced with both. So that's exactly right. Some people just by chance get ideas and then they find out, oh, that came true. Oh, I got a premonition of that and that came true. So then they start to pay attention to those feelings and then they start to develop their intuitive side and they can get good at it after a while. But one of the things I have learned that it follows a progression. One, you have an interest. Oh, I'd like to remote view. I'd like to, you know, be able to get around in consciousness and, and do these paranormal things. So that's like an attractive flower that attracts attention. But when you start doing them, if you do eventually get pretty good at it, you start to learn that there's something bigger outside. You're a small speck in a very big pond and that there is this force, the source, and there is information, and it tends to help you grow up. And eventually, those people who really get the best at these things don't use them anymore. They let it go. They don't continue to do it because what happens is they realize they create a bubble for themselves. They start to, to engineer their reality themselves by using their intent and and then they have what they've done is take themselves out of the general mix, which is where their opportunities come from. They're starting to bias the things that happen to them. And oh, yeah, their life is golden. Everything falls at their feet as they need it and so on. But their opportunities for growth start getting less and less because they're living in a created bubble that doesn't challenge them like the real world will challenge them. So they let it go and they stop doing them and they say, I don't need to do any of that. I'll just accept life the way it comes and I'll make the best choices I can make and I'll learn from my mistakes. And that's the way this schoolhouse works. And to create this bubble to live in is really not a good idea, but it's a great idea when you're learning because it gives you, it gives you drive. Oh, I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to experience this. And that drive is, is good. And it comes from, you know, wanting to know, wanting to experience. Wonderful. But eventually, once you become a master of those things, you let them all go because you realize they're not, they're not really what's going on here. What's going on here is stuff happens and you get to deal with it and you learn by dealing with that stuff. So if you get sick, you get sick. You don't, you don't heal yourself because sickness is part of being alive. It's part of how things work and you have to deal with it. But typically, you stay positive, you never get sick. So it's a, it's a mixed thing. But yes, everybody can do this. It's available to you because you're a piece of consciousness. But the things that keep you from doing it is fear. Fear creates ego. Fear creates belief. It's your ego and your beliefs that make it hard for you to do it. And your intellect will make it hard for you to do it. So that's the, you know, that's... You know, the way all the paranormal things is. How could I start remote viewing this week? If you're interested in remote viewing, 
And let's just add all the other paranormal things in there, okay? Mind-to-mind communication, uh, talking to dead people, uh, you know, throw them all in there. If you want to be able to do that and you, you, you need some help doing that, then I would say the best thing to do, and this isn't, I, I, I hate to sound like it's, it's an advertisement, but I have courses. I did courses for a bunch of years where I would teach people you know, what the paranormal things were, how did they work, what, how to learn them, and then I would teach them. I had a training course that would uh, go through. I offered up a set of, of a binaural beats that I created, which made the people who were not good meditators, it made them kind of function as a good meditator, put them in a, in a good meditation space, and then they would go experiment, come back, and we'd talk about it, and I'd tell them what they were doing wrong and so on, and then they'd go back, and we did this like 13, 14 times. They'd go back and experience, come back. I, I'd explain. I was their coach, just like you're talking about, so I coached them. Then some friends of mine, MBT Events, took all of those, took, and they, they took the best of the best, the best questions, the best answers, the best introductions, and they made a training course that's on audio. And you can go to my website, which is www.mbtevents. No, www.mybigtoe, my hyphen, big hyphen, toe. And if you go there, you'll see there's a product that's called uh, uh, Exploring Consciousness and Everything Paranormal. And it doesn't cost a whole lot. It's a, you know, it, it takes you, it's like five day course, but you can do it you know, every day for five weeks if you want to. Could you give me the over the overview of it? You can learn things faster if you do it intensely, whether you're learning a language or whatever. So the five days, if you could take the five days, you'll get more out of it than if you spread it out. But still, the overview is I explain each paranormal thing. Remote viewing is one day. I explain what remote viewing is, how to do it, how it works. People go do it. They come back. They ask questions. I answer their questions. You know, I, nothing happened. I didn't have anything. I mean, overview of how to do it without buying the course. And then if you want to get, yeah, what's like, what would be like if there was like a few bullet points of like, do this 30 minutes each day, do something. Right. All the, all the paranormal things would be basically the same thing. What you do is one, you have to learn to let go of your sense data. So you need to be able to let your sense data just go away. Now, people will think that's difficult, but you do that when you read a good book. When you read a really interesting book, somebody could walk behind you and you'd never know they were there. You've let go of your sense data. Now, when I say that, I, I mean, if the phone rang, you'd hear it, but you wouldn't process it. You'd say, eh, the phone's just ringing and you'd let it go. But if you're expecting a very important call, you could go take the call. So when you let your sense data go, what I mean is you stop processing sense data, just like you do when you read a good book, except when you read the book, you're processing what's going on in the book. So now stop reading the book and still let go of all your sense data, stop processing it. That's called a good meditation state, okay? And when you are successful with that, you become aware in a state I call point consciousness. And at that state, you're just aware that you exist. It's the Descartes, you know, state. I think, therefore I am, I'm aware, I'm conscious, therefore I exist, I am. And that's point consciousness. From point consciousness, that's the launch pad. Once you get get into the point consciousness state, then you can launch with your intent to do all kinds of things. You can go out of body. You can get data from the database. And as you practice these things, they get easier and easier and easier. So the launch point is point consciousness. If you meditate, say for 10 years, point consciousness should be an easy attainment. And you can get there in a few minutes. If you practice a whole lot and it becomes part of your life, you can get there in a few seconds. And eventually you can get there in fractions of a second. 